Okay, so I keep hearing about Dutch disease and it scares me because I'm a hypochondriac. What is it and do I have it? You don't have it. You're not a doctor. And it's not a disease. I mean, let me explain. In the 60s, a ton of natural gas was found off the Netherlands coast. By the 70s, the oil and gas rush had lifted local currencies to a level where manufacturing exports were no longer competitive. Wait, wait, so exporting gas is bad? I thought making money was good because then we uh, you know, have more money. Yeah, okay, sure. Okay, let's relate this to Canada. Dutch disease has been a simmering debate for a few years, but it boiled over after NDP leader Thomas Mulcair said that the value of the oil sands has artificially inflated the value of the dollar, which hurts manufacturing jobs, because then what we make becomes more expensive. All right, so is Mulcair right, or does he just hate my way of life? I mean, I trust a man with a beard. Well, okay, you can't go wrong with a bearded man, and Mulcair is partially right. But plotting oil against manufacturing is just oversimplifying things. It's hard to say how much of the loonies run-up is related to oil and how much of it has to do with the U.S. devaluing its dollar. I mean, the bulk of the loonies' gains were made in 2007 when it shot up about 28% against the greenback, but it only made up about half that against the euro. Wait, what's a greenback? That sounds terrifying, like the Hulk. Uh, it's just how most economic types refer to the American dollar. Oh. Yeah. Anyway. Since then, the loony has fallen way back against the greenback, all while the Americans became the epicenter of the biggest financial disaster in 70 years and drove their debt to gigantic levels. Canada, meanwhile, became the global poster child for financial strength and stability. But, but then the oil sands ruined everything with all of that centralized money? Is that what happened? Well, again, it's hard to measure how much the massive oil sands money is helping people in Ontario and Quebec, but it appears it's quite a bit. CIBC Vice Chairman and former Cabinet Minister Jim Prentice says it's estimated that Alberta energy companies will purchase more than $55 billion worth of goods from Ontario over the next 25 years. Well, sure, but that breaks down to, like, what, a couple of billion a year? Which, I mean, it's no small potatoes, but that ain't no auto industry. True, but the auto industry is not the whole manufacturing industry, and neither has been doing so bad lately. As former StatsCan chief economist Philip Cross noted in our pages recently, Canadian manufacturers have been restructuring to focus on higher valued goods and improving productivity. He says factory sales are in the third year of a recovery and that manufacturers have been confident enough in their future to step up investment, often in productivity increasing equipment, software, services, all that stuff for every year since 2009. But that's expensive, right? So how are they doing that? Well, having a high dollar helps. Wait, wait, wait. Is having a high dollar good or bad? Yes. Listen, all you need to know is you're not dying of Dutch disease. I trust you and your beard. I mean, I... I trust a man with a beard. Well, you can't go wrong with a bearded man.